Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. Today we'll take a look at this small game I have built some time ago. It is a two player game and it is all about being the fastest. So when pressing the start button, after a random period of time this red light will come on. And then you have to be the fastest to press the button. Say player 2 is fastest here. And we can start again, but if you press it before the red light comes on, then the opposite player gets the point. So you can't cheat. And the winner is the first to get three points. So this is very simple, and it is also very simple to build, both hardware and software wise. And as a software, because this is using a PIC16F628A microcontroller. And as you can see, there's not many other components at all. There's three buttons, and we have five LEDs, and eight resistors. And we also need a voltage regulator and two capacitors. And when we got this voltage regulator, you can use anywhere from 7 to over 30 volts input voltage. As an example, I use a 9 volt battery. So let's take a look at the schematic and the code so we can see how to build one of these games. And everything you see here will be available on my website so you can download the code, the schematic, and the board layout, and everything you need to make the game yourself. And as we can see here, it's all powered from 5 volts from this voltage regulator. And we have an input and an output capacitor. So we have 5 volts at the microcontroller and at one side of each of the buttons. And we have 3 buttons, one for each player and the start button. And for each player we have 2 LEDs and we have the ready LED, the red one here. And there is a current limiting resistor for each of these both the buttons and the LEDs. The resistors on the buttons are there to pull the line down when the button is not pressed, so that the microcontroller will get a, a zero all the time. So when you press the button, 5 volts will flow through the button, and since there's no resistance here, it will override this resistor and just set 5 volts at the input. And the resistors at the LEDs are just to limit the current because they cannot handle the 5 volts without any resistors. And you'll be able to find the values for these on the website as well, but they are not too critical, so if you have something close to the number I've written, you can just use that. It's not really that important. So that was really all for the hardware. You can see that each of these lines go into a separate pen on the microcontroller. And we will take a look at that when we get to the software. And if we take a look at the board, you can see that it looks almost exactly like the schematic. So we have the microcontroller here, we have one player here, the other player here, and the start button here. So to make this work, we'll need a small C program. I have written this in MPLab, which is the program that comes with the PicKit free programmer that I use to program the PIX. There's also some do-it-yourself programmers on the internet. You can try to search Google for JDM programmer. And I will recommend you build the 40 pin one if you choose that one. I started by using that JDM programmer and I think it's okay considering it's free. I have to buy the components but they're not really that expensive. You don't really have to know anything about the C language to make one of these games. But if you want to change anything, then you do, I'm afraid. But you will need to know how to program the hex file into the PIC microcontroller using your programmer. So, let's quickly go through the code so you can see how this is set up. And this is not very pretty, I'm sorry about that. I'm sure that could be done better, but I just wrote it all sequentially. So it should be easy enough to find out anyways. So first of all we'll need to set the configuration bits. And we do that here. 
and I have set it to use the internal oscillator at 4 MHz. I've turned the watchdog timer off, the power on timer off, and the MCLRE is set to off, so we don't need any pull-ups on the reset pin. And the brownout voltage is also set to off, low voltage programming is set to off, and both the EEPROM and the flash memory protection is also set to off. I'm defining that the frequency is 4 MHz. We'll need that for the delay routine a little later. And the T R I S A and B is for the data direction register in the microcontroller. And that is short for tri-state, if I'm not mistaken. But what this will do is to set the appropriate pin to either an input or an output. And as you can see, the 1 looks like an I for input, and the 0 looks like an O for output. So that's actually what it is. And the least significant bit, the right one here, is pin number 0, and the most significant is pin number 7 on the microcontroller. And you can see the port is A and B. So that will be RA0 is set to input, RA1 is set to an input, RB0 is set to input, and all the rest of the pins are outputs. And of course these input pins are where our buttons will go. And this port A and port B determines if the pins are high or low voltage. And since this is set to zero, all the pins will just be at the low voltage or zero volts for both port A and port B. And I have turned on the timer inside and I have turned off the comparators. And then I have made some variables that we will need later on. We will need one to say if we have started the game. And when we start the game it will set a delay and this has to be a new value for each time you start the game so you can not know when to press the button so this will be random. And we have one for the player 1 points and the player 2 points. And we have this I. This is just one that I'm using when the LEDs flash when one player wins. So that's not really that important. And we have the start delay and that is the actual delay that will get set at the same time that we will do something with this one. And when we power up the game it will just flash all the LEDs a couple of times and it will go into a while one loop. And that means it will never get back to this part again. So that will only be done once. And then we ask if RB0 equals 1. If it does, it will set the start variable to 1. And for now on we know that the game has been started. And down here it checks if start equals 1 and delay set equals 0. If this equals 0 then it knows that the game has just started and it will need to set a delay. So we will take the number that timer 2 is currently at, and that depends on when you press the button, so that's pretty random. And then we add 250 to the timer 2 value, because this value could be near 0. And if it is, then you don't have time to move your finger from the start button to your button to be ready to press when the LED lights up. So those 250 make sure that there's always a certain delay before the LED can light up. And this part up here is the random part. It will then set the delay set to 1 so it will never enter this again before the game has ended. And now we can see if start delay is greater than 0, and it is because we have just set it up here and the timer to interrupt flag equals 1. That means that the timer 2 has run out and it has started from 0 again. 
If this is true, then it will subtract one from the start delay and it will clear the timer to interrupt flag. And the code will actually just repeat itself until this is no longer greater than zero. And when this is no longer greater than zero, that means it is zero. And then it will go into this if statement. And it will turn on the LED, the start LED. But of course, there could be someone that pressed the button before the start LED lights up. And if they do, they are of course cheating and they have to be punished. So the other player will get a point. And, that's and that is done in this if statement here. If start equals 1, meaning that we have started the game, but the start delay is not 0, meaning it's counting down, it's getting ready to light up the LED, then if this button is pressed, RA0, then player 2 will get a point, because this is player 1 button. And it will set start to 0, because then the game has ended. It will set the delay set to 0, so we can start a new game and it will turn on and it will turn off the uh, start LED as well and we have exactly the same thing here just for player 2 instead so if player 2 presses the button before the start LED has lit up then player 1 will get the point and down here we have the opposite situation if the start delay equals 0 that means the LED must have lit up and if you press the button now it's a valid point so if player 1 presses the button player 1 will get a point and if player 2 presses the button player 2 will get a point and the rest is just the same thing and of course if both the players press the button at exactly the same time then I'm afraid player 1 will get the point and, and there's nothing we can do about that really but we could of course check up here if player 2 has pressed the button as well, but there's no really any reason to do that because this is so fast that that's impossible to press the buttons at the same time. And down here we check if player 1 equals 1. If it does, then the uh, first LED will light up, so we can see that that player has got a point. And if it equals 2, then this will light up and it will of course remember the first point as well because we have not turned that one off yet and if player one have got three points it will flash the LEDs by turning both off and then entering this for loop and that's where we need the i variable that we set earlier and this will set i to 40 and it will subtract one each time this loop is passed. So that means the LEDs will, as you can see here, blink 20 times because one time through the code and the LED are lit up and another time through the code and they will be turned off again. This symbol means opposite of. So if RA2 equals 1 then this will set it to 0 and the other way around if it set to 0, this will set it to 1. And after that we will turn the LEDs off. We will set both players points to 0. And here we'll do all the same just for player 2 instead. And that's it. That's the end of the code. And I can't remember if I mentioned this, but every time a player gets a point the start is set to zero so you'll have to press the start button every time a point is given no matter if it's a point to the opposite player because of cheating or if it is a valid point given to the player that the first to press and we can just take a look at the board layout as well so here you can see all the traces the buttons and the LEDs and in the middle we have the microcontroller. I also did this in a hurry so this might be something that could be improved. And in this layout you'll have to add a jumper link from the positive terminal of the 
microcontroller here into 5 volts. So, as you can see here on my board, I have a jumble link going from there to there. So, if you like this video, you can go to my website and you can build one of these yourself. And then please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And the links will be down in the description. So, see ya!